Water is the ultimate solvent. Because that's one reason we have life on this planet, is because we have vast amounts of water. Plastic takes hundreds of thousands of years to, to degrade, so, uh, or it, it'll break up into smaller pieces and end up in the ocean. Would you say it's getting worse? It's got worse. Oh, absolutely. What happens? Because people live out of their cars. <laughs> you know, they live and eat out of their cars. Right. Litter. It has long been considered an eyesore. Litter and single-use plastics that come in contact with our waterways can lead to systemic environmental disruptions that we are only now starting to understand. In an effort to better understand the ways that litter can be abated and kept out of our waters, New Jersey Clean Communities Council has undertaken an initial waterway survey at various water basins and drainage sites around New Jersey. I'll go over there, I'll measure it, and then I'll let you do your magic. The New Jersey Department of Transportation supplied a list of 290 drainage basins all across New Jersey. The uh, New Jersey DOT has a list of all the catch basins throughout the state. Um, so that list was provided to us, and then from that list we were able to choose a certain number of catch basins that we were going to survey, both in the northern and the southern part of the state. We also have a number of waterways that we chose from. This includes rivers, lakes, uh, streams, and creeks. So the plan is for us to revisit the exact same sites that we're doing now at a predetermined um, number of either months or years in the future to see if the litter prevention programs have been successful in helping to reduce trash and litter from these select sites. 20 plus sites were selected for the survey, which tabulates the types and amounts of litter to formulate statistics for a time study and other purposes. Um, when you figure out the, the litter situation like this, um, you have to sit down and come up with a game plan to safely remove the litter because this isn't just a simple cleanup, especially if you see things like needles and things like that. So it's the type of litter and then it's also like the geography, like the logics of, of cleaning up this litter. This data is critical to the mission of New Jersey Clean Communities Council to keep litter and plastics off of our beach off of our roadways and out of our waterways. We have, we've actually used uh, county recycling coordinators a number of times, um, which is very helpful because they know the area um, and they can provide insight into how often these roadways may or may not get cleaned, um, who's picking it up, etc. But judging by the amount of trash going all the way 252 feet that, that direction, um, this has not been cleaned up in a long time. There's a lot of trash. So at this basin, we have three entrance points. We have a southern point over there, a northern point over there, and then a third point in this direction behind that tree. The actual basin seems to be draining from south to north, but that's the metal grate that's covering the exit point to the uh, basin itself. So no large items will be able to escape through that, uh, just smaller pieces of small plastics and paper. They're very close to each other. So we're at N14 now. We're gonna go here to N12, and then N13 is right next to it. You see, it's pretty dirty. Interesting, huh? It's definitely been out here a long time. Probably easily over 30 years. Yeah, you know, it's a little steep. You can break an ankle, right? The storms in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, you send these crew in there. I mean, they're just gonna Somebody pick up. Injured. But they do pick up here. They do send, and the sweeper comes by and does the road. Okay. But this area has been. I've been here 46 years. It's, it's just not good. We're looking at catch bases. We're looking at rivers. We're looking at lakes. Any kind of body of waterway. Uh, because we're that looking affects into. the waterway. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. All this stuff could eventually end up in the, in the river here. And the thing is, litter becomes more litter. It's That's like right. Feedy. That's One exactly piece right. becomes another piece, becomes another piece. Becomes... We've done extensive work in the back bays of Maryland. Uh, we've done work in North Carolina. Uh, we were involved in the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico and a whole host of other places. So we, but we keep coming back to the system because it is so exceptional. Ken Abel, a marine biologist, has studied the marine environment in New Jersey for over 30 years. Although not directly involved in the visual litter survey, he has offered some insight into the importance of time studies. So one of the real advantages of our location is our ability to sample in a consistent manner over time to see how things have changed. 
So for over 30 years we've been sampling larval or baby fishes and small juvenile fishes coming in from the ocean where they were spawned. And we've been doing this once a week on night flood tides for 30 years. Time after time the value of this location and its relationship to this very clean estuary, the Mullica Great Bay Estuary, has proven really valuable. So much so that we use it as a baseline for comparison to other systems where we're doing research. So this is our baseline, but as an example, we've been working in New York Harbor for 20 years, and that's the opposite of this. It has the highest population density of any estuary in the world. Uh, we have the lowest human population density of, in New Jersey and elsewhere on the East Coast. In another part of New Jersey, on the Passaic River above Newark, is a litter skimmer boat operated by the Passaic Valley Sewerage Authority. We've been doing this since 1998, and we uh, pull out about 250,000 tons for the year, so we're really making a considerable difference on what's, under the, on what's floating on top of the Passaic River. Some days that may not be apparent because the tides bring in new trash every day. But we're here every day doing it, and it really, it would be pretty crazy to think, pretty mind-boggling to think what the river would look like if we weren't doing this. Well, it's a mixture of, uh, well, human beings, obviously. We, we litter. Anything that people throw out the window of their car onto the highway blows into the river or, or washes into a storm drain, which eventually washes into, into the river. Um, you have Mother Nature knocks down trees and limbs and things of that nature. You have people who um, live on tributaries of the Passaic River who dump grass and, and branches from their yard and it, or they pile them in the back and the next storm comes it washes this stuff away. Or they'll pile, you know, um, we get a lot of the like little little Tykes playhouses, things like that. Some things people have in their backyard or in the, behind the shed next to the, next to the brook washes in in a storm ends up in the Passaic River. We find it all. We get a dry spell, the, the debris collects in the storm sewers, and then when we get a good rain, kind of spits it out into the river, a lot of it. There's a lot of litter out there. I would imagine it's not intentional. It's, you, you see up, up and down the Passaic River, there's a lot of parks and a lot of homes, and people leave a bottle out, people don't throw it away properly, and things get washed in. And um, that's, um, that's unfortunately a lot, of, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the ways that some of this litter gets in there. The tide comes this way, bring, it'll move down and then come up, and then move down and come up, and then move down. It always gets a little bit further down. It doesn't come up back up this way, so yeah. You got, I mean, who knows where it's, it could be coming from all the way upriver. Who knows how long it's been in the water. You could cut stuff and leave it on the bank and exceptionally high tide come and pick it up. A storm wash it in. A thousand different ways it could get in the water. We've even had people suggest to try to recycle what's in the You can't recycle this. And we've, we've even talked to recycling companies, they don't want the material because it's so, it's so dirty that they can't recycle it. And you'd have to, you'd, you'd spend weeks sifting through this material to try to get out every little piece of, yeah. it just all has to go. It depends with the tides, the moon, the tide's coming in, you get it, and the tide's going out. But, uh, it does. I feel like it did something, cleaning up, you know, everything up. You know, it's gratifying too. You pick up a lot of stuff, you know. You want to be an environmentalist. I mean, this is the job to get it done. You do your, I do my share of picking stuff up in the river, thanks to Passaic Valley. You know, keep things clean. I'm a nature lover. Cleaning up log jams and just keeping the river flowing and clean. And uh, really, that's it. Try to prevent flooding. It's got something to do with it, sure. You know, keep it moving, keep it clean. Typically, we see um, the most debris right around high tide, an hour before and about an hour after. Um, that's that's like the, uh, the the sweet spot that we have to hit with our vessel. We don't hit the sweet spot every day, so when we do, we got to make sure that we're out there, everything's working, that we're maximizing the, the storage on the vessel, which is why we we take so much care to to pack and, and cut the material to pack it in to get the biggest you know bang for our buck because we only have a couple hour window to really, really do the good work. There's always something out there, a little piece here and there, but that vessel does its best work when it's, you know, when it's centralized, the, the debris. Well, today was a pretty contained slick. It was only about probably like a 
double wide of the boat, which is fairly narrow. Sometimes it's spread out, and uh, sometimes you can walk across it. Sometimes it gets really matted up and, you know, pretty bad. But when you're out there and you're doing what we see today, and you just see all those bottles and all those, you know, candy wrappers, cans, all different types of trash, it's really, it really adds up. There's a lot of uh, sediment buried on the bottom. Above the Dundee Dam up in Patterson, we do a lot of, we do a lot of, we remove tires, uh, any of the dump, dump shopping carts, things like that. And um, if it's anything that it looks like up there, it's a mess because it's up in, uh, above the dam, Patterson, Hawthorne, Elmwood Park, those towns like that. I mean, it's just, you don't notice it until you walk in there. Once you, once you walk in and actually look, you can see it's, it's a carpet of man-made material. Everything is in there. Anything, that's, anything that sinks, it, it just sinks and it stays there. And it's gonna be there forever. It's not recyclable anymore. Recycling companies don't want it after it gets, uh, it gets to a certain point, I guess they can't use it. Well, what you saw today, how the guys were really focused on packing that boat, trying to get as much in it as you can before we lose it again. Because it, once it gets past us, then it, well, we have another stop, which is our newer vessel. Once it gets past that vessel, if it gets, if it gets south of us, past Newark, it's gone, it's in the ocean. So there's nobody else doing this past us. So anything that comes down, if you see something that floats past us here and we don't grab it, you, you're gonna see it in the ocean. You know, eventually it's gonna be part of the, the bigger problem. So we try to get as much as we can, as fast as we can, because once, once, once we miss it, it's gone. So it's, we have one shot at it. We see it every day, it's not, nothing out here is pretty, but it could be. The issue of plastics is something, plastics in the environment is something I've actually thought about for a fairly long time. And I have to admit that I was one of the people who thought, well, at least the plastics are inert. They're not going to cause the problems that lead and cadmium and other things can cause in a system. Uh, turns out I was pretty much wrong because plastics do break down over time and they break down into even microplastics uh, so that their impact on the system is really becoming to be understood much more fully. I mean, at one level you have helium balloons from some kids party floating out in the ocean and being ingested by, by sea turtles and clogging their intestine and causing problems. Um, but the unseen part of this, the part that may be more important even than that, or as important, is the fact that once the plastic breaks down, there are all kinds of microfibers in the environment. Unfortunately, all this is very preliminary, but what is out there is disturbing as to how pervasive these plastics are in the environment. The Waterway Survey is likely to add to the success of the 2018 Visual Litter Survey, which revisited the sites from 20 years before and noted a 53% reduction in litter. All of the boots on the ground that we spoke with echo the same sentiments. It's lack of enforcement yeah. Um, yeah. and behavior issues. issues. Well, I mean, look, someone just threw, what, five packets of ketchup out the yeah, window? I mean, really. Why? They couldn't keep it till they got home? <laughs> uh, we see a little bit more litter in the waterways, um, in the catch basins especially. There's nowhere for the litter to go once it gets, you know, once it's in the catch basin, once it's in the water. Right. If a piece of litter is on the ground, it can blow away or somebody can pick it up, but once it's in the water, 